Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing a top 5 Europa Universalis 4 video. I'm going to be covering the top 5 most interesting factions in this game. So this is obviously a very personal list, these are the 5 factions that I think are the most interesting to play throughout the campaign. You guys are more than free to uh, disagree. If you do disagree, let us know in the comments below. Anyway, let's now move on to the number 5 pick. Coming in at number 5 is the Ottoman Empire. Now I believe that this is a really good starting faction for people. If you don't have a whole lot of experience with the game, this is a pretty easy to learn faction that doesn't have a whole lot of really strong enemies on its border. So you tend to be able to dictate the terms of these wars. You, the Ottomans don't usually have people declaring war on them unless it's coalition wars. So. One thing that I like to do as the Ottomans, I do try to do World Conquest, which I've never actually ma managed to succeed in European Universalis 4. I usually just get a little bit tired of the game, sort of when you get to around 1700, and that's sort of, that's sort of when the real conquest begins. But anyway, the start of the campaign is definitely the most interesting, you know, taking Constantinople, making the decision whether or not you want to go into Europe or uh, into Persia, or even all of it. Uh, I like to try to match, or, or even beat, what the uh, what the Ottomans did historically, and that's not easy to do because the game restrictions don't allow for the same level of conquest as what they did. So, for example, the Mamluks. Historically speaking, the Mamluks were defeated on the second war that the Ottomans uh, fought with them, and they were able to annex the entirety of Egypt. But in Europa Universalis 4, that's just not possible. You'll only be able to take a few little chunks of them at a time. And that being said, if you're playing right on anything above normal difficulty, the Mamluks at the beginning of the game are actually more powerful than the Ottomans, so they'll put up a decent fight, so they'll really wear you down as you come into the desert, so taking them all out in one or two wars is just not possible, meaning that you have to start the wars earlier than what they did historically, and you need to keep on them, don't let them build back up. That could be quite challenging to do. Another enemy, or major enemy, that the Ottomans are going to face is Austria. So, as the Holy Roman Emperor, they usually maintain that, unless you really sort of work them down. Uh, they will form an alliance with Hungary pretty early on, me blocking your expansion. So unless you take out Hungary before Austria gets, gets a personal union with them, or gets an alliance with them, expanding into Europe can sometimes be a bit of a waste of time for the Ottomans, just because every little territory that you take is going to cause so much aggressive expansion, and there's so many powerful nations here, especially the Holy Roman Empire, if you add it all together, that it's you really don't want to form a coalition. Another option is going north, but then you eventually butt heads with Poland and Russia when Russia eventually forms, which it pretty much always does. That can also be very difficult, because the lands out here aren't that valuable to you, but they can really pummel you down if you get on their shit list. So there's a lot of challenges to face as the Ottoman Empire, and in my opinion, it's the fifth most interesting faction to players in this game. Let's now move on to number four. Coming in at number four is Poland. So Poland's in a very precarious position right at the start. You don't actually start off with a king, you're in an interregnum. Now, there's two options that will occur very early on. You can choose to have a Lithuanian Jagiello uh, king, which will give you a personal union with Lithuania, or you could choose to have a, a higher quality local lord. Now obviously the, the better choice is to per get personal union with Lithuania, but that does make your uh, country an elective monarchy, which isn't really that bad, but it can put you under the influence of other factions, but generally speaking, it's not much to worry about. You do have the Teutonic Order to deal with at the start, but they are an absolute pushover. Uh, the the high time of the Teutonic uh, you know, Crusades, that's over and done with now. And it's just a case of, are you going to take that territory or let Pomerania or Brandenburg get to it first? It's very important that you get control of the Danzig province if you want to just be able to use a... Uh, uh, where is it? Use a uh, mission here to just get the whole thing in one go, rather than annexing them using diplomatic power. So, Poland is not necessarily the strongest faction, but the great thing about it, what makes it so interesting for me, is the options that are available to you. It's not just like a, a faction where you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, and you just have to wait it out. There are options available to you that just require maybe a little bit of patience. So if you want to become the, uh, the Commonwealth, you can't do that immediately, but you have to start making plans for it. If you want to become the Holy Roman Emperor, you can do it. You can become the Holy Roman Emperor very quickly if you give away a little bit of your territory. 
and uh, get enough relations with with Austria so that you can make Krakow a, uh, a a member of the Empire and then eventually get elected. You can become elected not doing that, but it's a lot more difficult. Um, going to the east, one of the big enemies that Poland will face is Russia. Now, you can stop Russia from forming if you can manage to capture enough territory and prevent Muscovy from just stomping over Novgorod. But since you don't actually border Muscovy, you kind of require Lithuania to make claims on them first, or else all you can really hope to do is humiliate them, which isn't particularly productive. But at the same time, you don't want Lithuania expanding too much, or else you won't be able to absorb them. If they go over 57 territories, you can't absorb them. Another big enemy that Poland will have is the number five pick, the Ottomans. You'll be able to get a, a, a vassal of Moldavia through an event pretty early on, which will put you at a border with the Ottomans. And the Ottomans, generally speaking, don't get along with anyone. So at some point, they'll probably make you a rival if you continue to get, you know, continue to grow strong, which is what you should be trying to do. And you're going to have to butt heads with them at some point. And the Ottomans can be very challenging to deal with. Another thing is that you can get a personal union with Hungary, provided you prevent Austria from getting that personal union as well. It seems like everybody wants a piece of Hungary. So that's why I think that Poland is the fourth most interesting faction. Not the strongest faction in the game, but you have loads of options available to you. Choose your destiny and try not to get a three-way partition by Prussia, Austria and Russia later down the track. Anyway, let's now move on to number three. Coming in at number three is Castile. Now, in my opinion, Castile is arguably, of course, the strongest faction in this game because its sheer potential is absurd. Very early on, you'll get the Iberian Wedding Event, which will allow you to personal union with, uh, with Aragon and Naples, provided no nothing disastrous happens, but 99 out of 100 times, everything will go according to plan. You have a friendly neighbor over here with Portugal, which you can eventually get a, uh, a personal union with, if you play your cards right. And then there's France over here, which probably you will come at odds with, but it's entirely up to you how you want to deal with France. If you want to really go for ropes and take that fucker down, or just ignore them entirely. You've got the rest of the Reconquista to do, you still got Granada here, which really shouldn't be that difficult. And if you wanted to move into North Africa, entirely up to you. But the great thing about Castile is its ability to colonize. Now we can't really see it in this map here, but America's over here somewhere. And Castile can get there first, either that or Portugal. Now the thing is with, with the Americas, it doesn't mean that the first person there gets the most rewards, but it often gives you a good opportunity to establish stuff. Now, once you've got a good foothold in America, that'll make you so much ridiculous amounts of money that it'll be able to fund your wars through the rest of the campaign. And which is why you'll usually find Castile easily overtake Ming and become, become a very powerful faction. But this isn't the top five most powerful faction video. This is about how interesting it is. So in my opinion, I haven't played too much with Castile, but in, in my opinion, Castile does have a lot of options at its, at its disposal. If you want to go for Holy Roman Empire, you can also do that as well. Very interesting faction, quite enjoy playing as them. Let's move on now to number two. Coming in at number two is England. Now, England is arguably one of the more powerful factions but it's also one of the more difficult factions to begin with. There's a very high possibility that if you don't keep your head on your shoulders and try not to panic, that everything will go to shit and go belly up right away. Because there's two things that are going to happen very early on that can really derail your campaign if you're not calm and sort it out quickly. So the first thing is the Hundred Years War needs to come to a conclusion. And essentially you start the war, but it's kind of France as well, but you're the aggressor in the war. Now, the thing is, when that happens, France gets to call in all of its allies, and you don't really get to call in any of yours, because there's no way you'll have accumulated enough favor by then. So taking on France and all of its allies in order to hold all of your assets can be very difficult. You can, of course, choose to be a little bitch and just give them main without a fight, but they're going to be asking for those other territories later down the track as well. But at least they're the aggressor when it comes down to that. So it's entirely up to you how you want to deal with it, uh, but it's a challenging issue nonetheless. Stopping France in its tracks can be quite quite be quite useful. Now, if you want to kowtow to them at the beginning, it's also important to note that you can get a personal union with France later down the track. 
if you can manage to capture Paris. So don't don't fret too much if you lose too much of the territory at the beginning. Now that's the first thing that's going to happen. It's going to possibly derail your campaign. The second thing is the War of the Roses. Now you can prevent the War of the Roses, but sometimes it's just more effort to actually prevent it than actually to just just rip off the band-aid and just take a smack on the bum. You're just going to have to deal with this War of the Roses bullshit. Once it's over, it doesn't happen a second time at least. Then, once you're finally done with those two fucking events, you can go about controlling all of Britannia. Now, that's the real fun part. Taking out Scotland, or getting a personal union, entirely up to you. Uh, and then conquering Ireland. Ireland's a piece of piss, no problem taking them out. And once you're done with that, go over to America and put the English smackdown over there. It's a lot of fun. Or if you want to conquer Europe, you can do that as well. If you want to become Holy Roman Empire, also a thing that's available to you. So that's why England, from, in my opinion, gets the number two pick. It's a very interesting faction, got a quite a challenging start position, and there's just a lot you can do in the campaign, and that's what makes it fun. Now let's move on to the number one pick for the most interesting faction, for me personally, in Europa Universalis 4. Coming in at number one for the most interesting faction, of course, in my personal opinion, is Austria. So I don't I don't claim to be an expert at this game. I've clocked about a thousand hours, which for EU4 is considered not very much. And I've played quite a few factions, and I haven't played them all, but of those that I've played, I've probably enjoyed playing as Austria the most. Now, the main reason for that is because it doesn't play like any of the other factions in this game. The thing about Austria is that it's a very diplomatic game. Because you start off as the Holy Roman Emperor, you have to take care of the other princes in your empire. Now, when I play as any other faction in this game, every other country is just a punching bag or something to be used that, that'll that get me what I want. But for Austria, I have to take care to make sure that these guys don't get absorbed by external powers and even internal powers. You don't want Brandenburg absorbing Pomerania. You don't want Saxony absorbing Anhalt. You don't want these things to happen because every time you lose a prince, your your authority doesn't accumulate by as much. And if it goes down by too much, then you actually start losing authority. It's very important to get down to revoke the privilegia. Once you get to there, it's basically GG. You, you win at that point because nobody's going to be able to stop you. Unless there's only like two princes left within the empire, but at that point you wouldn't be getting any authority anyway. So with Austria, it's not just that's not just that you have to deal with as well. There are so many personal unions that you can do with Austria. Like I said, diplomacy is a huge part of this game. So getting the Hungarian um, personal union early on is pretty damn easy. It can happen by via event, or you can get it through missions. It's pretty easy to to make that happen. You can get a personal union with Bohemia, but the thing is about Bohemia, getting a personal union with them will make the other electors pissed off because Bohemia will always vote for you. Um, if you've got a personal union with them. And then, much later down the campaign, it's possible to personal union Castile, or Spain, because of the, the Habsburg event that happens there. Now, the thing is, because I've already mentioned, Castile ends up becoming usually one of the most powerful factions in this game, making them, a, a, getting a personal union with them, and then absorbing them, just makes can potentially make you utterly, ridiculously powerful, and it's all done via diplomacy. And that's one of the great things about it. It's not just that as well, there's so many other things that will occur. You've got the, the Burgundy event, when the Duke of Burgundy dies, the inheritance thing. It might go to Austria, it might go to Castile, it might go to someone else. I don't I don't know the mechanic that well. Um, I've seen it happen to Spain and, and Austria, I haven't seen it happen to anyone else. Then of course there's the Protestant event. You know, with the, with the religious disunity in, in Europe, Every province that becomes non-Catholic lowers your imperial authority. And so making them go back to Catholicism and stomping out those centers of reformation should be a top priority. Either, th either that or eventually letting Protestantism spread everywhere and then eventually converting. Entirely up to you. But in my opinion, remaining Catholic is kind of more powerful than Protestant. It depends on the situation, but for Austria, I think remaining Catholic is the best option but basically Austria there's so many different ways you can go about getting what you want and you don't even have to go to war a lot of the time to get what you want you can do it via diplomacy or if you do declare war sometimes you don't have to lift a fucking finger you can just let your vassal swarm do all the work for you and 
I mean, that's a bit lazy, but that's what you can do. So that's why Austria gets the number one pick. I don't expect everyone to agree with me on that. It is a very subjective list. But those are my top five pick. What do you think? What factions do you enjoy the most playing EU4? Anyway, that's the end of this list, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.